IBM 1401 a user's manual. According to Wikipedia, IBM 1401, a user's manual is the fourth full-length studio album by Icelandic musician Johan Johansson, released under 4AD on October 30th, 2006. That's what Join us next week. Yeah. So, yes, hello and indeed. Mm, this is interesting, isn't it? This is something different. Mm. Uh, yeah, this is by Johan Johansson. Correct. There's two Johan Johanssons. The other guy is, is a sort of punchable Swedish pop star. Uh, but this guy's from Iceland. So just to, just to clarify, I think the zoom lights on his name, which we probably won't have put in the description. So sorry, we apologise for not using the zoom lights. But yeah, the, the audio is, it's, it's a, is it classical? Do you call it a modern classical? It's modern classical slash ambient. And yet it isn't quite, quite but either of those things. It's, 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 it's not a difficult album, is it? It's, quite, it's, it's, it's lots of strings with nice tunes. It, that, that you could describe it like that. It doesn't deserve it in a way, but that, that's essentially what it is. And obviously based on this computer, because his father was one of the very first programmers in Iceland, programming on this, this thing. I, I, I thought it was strange that I'd actually never heard of it, but the reason is it's from 1959, which, if you may not have guessed, is before my time. And my time starts before I was born, but that is, even that is before my time. I thought it was like a 70s mainframe. 1959. It is a mini-computer, for those that don't know. <laughs> Uh, the mini computer fits in a room, a micro computer sits on a desk. So that's interesting. Punched cards and all that stuff. Apparently it's six bit or, or kind of eight bits, kind of six bit on the on the punched cards. But what's really interesting about it for those that care, it wasn't microchips. I it was don't. it was it was circuits, actual wired circuits of here's a resistor, here's a capacitor, you know, and wires between them mm -hmm. on a circuit. Not no no chips. Amazing. Yeah. Um, and the maintenance engineers, they didn't just have to be sort of like electronics experts and gurus. Yeah. They had to be sort of like computing experts. And they also had to be mechanical engineers. Engineers with oil. And mechanical. Make sure it's oiled. Yeah. yeah. A very, uh, a very, uh, I would imagine his father was a very clever guy. I think it was, it was quite an advanced machine because you could write assembly on it. And I think if, if it says here, if you had 4K of RAM, you could have COBOL. You could use COBOL. And if you had 8K of RAM, you could write Fortran. So that, you know, it shows at the time it was uh, cutting edge. But yeah, this is originally written for a string quartet, um, and then re-recorded for this album um, with a massive sixty-piece orchestra of strings. So that it sounds glorious, it's a lovely sound. Um, mixed in with the, these these sounds, uh, you found in the attic allegedly, of training videos, training films of how to use it. Some of the tunes are sort of. Composed by his father on the 1401. Yeah. He sort of he managed to tweak it so it would produce sort of electromagnetic waves that could be re, you know picked up by radio. Yeah. So and when they decommissioned it, he played some of these songs and they recorded it, and that's what he found in the attic. Yeah. Sort of the the tapes of these songs, which is it's incredibly touching, isn't it? In a, it yeah. It's a really or, a real authentic feel. Yeah, and that that's the whole feel of the album, isn't it? That's yeah. it and, and uh, nostalgia maybe and, and that kind of thing and. and Obviously, if you grew up with computers, you can relate to that mm -hmm. of any era. It's not really ambient in, 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 in the sense of what we would call ambient, but it certainly is a passive, you've got to sit there and let the music wash over you. Listen, it, it isn't a, that's a riff, that, they did a thing there, what was that? It's certainly not like that, it, it, is, it is something that, that, that moves and the, the strings move, and it's simple themes. Pretty good. I mean, he writes a lot of film music now, doesn't he? And you can sort of see, Yeah. you can see the genesis of that. I think it's a wonderful piece of work. Uh, conceptually, one of the uh, in interesting things about it is it's sort of not circa 1964. Mm. Um, and obviously we're sort of used to, sort of techno fear and stuff like that. The um, the fear of technology, yeah. what it could eventually become, you know. Computer was, God! Um, films and that from Metropolis till to one of the best uh, proponents of that is, 90, uh, is 2001, A Space Odyssey. Yeah, which is so wonderful. Dave. Open the pathway exhaust piece, Hal. I can't do that, Dave. And there's a sort of... Uh, this is this seems to have such an optimistic view of um, of the future and technology yeah. and stuff yeah. like that. And there's a sort of a, a strange similarity between the, the moment in, in 2001 where Hal singing Daisy. Daisy. Yeah. Daisy. And then you've got these tunes coming from the, uh, the 14, like these, these simple tunes. Yeah. Yeah. And the sort of the clash between the optimism and the 
and the fear of, of what could be is really interesting and there seems to be a, a whole dialogue in there about artificial intelligence yeah. and, and stuff like that which is which I think we would normally kind of sag our shoulders at a little bit. <laughs> yeah, but it's touchingly naive, yeah. but in a nice yeah. way. Not not in a not it's not stupid. Not yeah. so, it's just nice. It gives death, and it, ar it it arises out of the music rather than being crowbarred into there. Which computerized God, <laughs> it's a new religion. <laughs> yeah. So I thought I think this is a little gem. Do we do the songs? Yeah. So track number one. Track number one, part one, is definitely the, 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 the first place to start, isn't it? It's is definitely the hook into the album. This would be the, the focus track, the single, whatever. And you've got the, the tune played by the by the 1401. Yeah. It's a stylophone type sound, isn't it? So it, it, it invites you in in that, in that innocent way. And that, there's that theme just repeats throughout. And there's just strings, washes, and lovely. Yeah, it's a very, um, not melancholic, I'd say. It, it does feel sort of... Kind of sad and celebratory in the uh, at the same time. It's a sort of a very sort of downbeat thing, almost like the dawn of time or something like that. Yeah, because it is. Yeah, <laughs> it really is. Isn't it? Yeah, fifties, yeah. and, and it um it it builds into something quite symphonic and nice. Lots and lots of strings. Lots of strings. Sixty string instruments all at once. Yeah, brilliant. Track two. Part two. Uh, printer. The printer. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they, they had a printer, that's good. Was that its only output? It would have had flashing lights in the printer originally? I imagine Probably, later on yeah. they'd have had other things. but yeah. Card read and punch, so that's the next one, but we'll, we'll go on to that. Yeah. So the, this is the one with samples from the from the operating manual, is that right? Yes, from the, tra from the training film. From the training film. Yeah, it's, obviously it's not a training video, it would be a training yeah. film, there's no video. Sound of a tuning fork as well, yeah. it's like the, the, the recurring thing, that's, that's Ding. really cool. Um, stuff about check the oil level and all that. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's got to be inviting in computer nerds. Well, I mean, we we obviously would love. Yeah, you check the oil level. But it is sort of strangely hypnotic. I mean, it's a very simple uh, arrangement. It is literally these um, these audio samples from these tapes with a bell, and then slowly it starts to introduce strings, strings at the end. Yeah, the strings. strings and the strings build a little, but then it, it, it sort of. Fades away and there's some beepy stuff going on as it, as it goes away, yeah. which I really like. Yeah, that might be my favourite one on there. Might be my second favourite. I, I think I quite quite like that one. Track three is a uh, card read punch. Yeah, this this is the longest track on the album. This is about ten minutes. Yeah, um, and it's the strings are kind of more romantic kind of style. Dare I say a bit dull? Do I dare say that? I, th it, I think you can say. I think it does sort of lose its lose its way a little bit here. Um, it could be, it could be punchier. This is part of what makes it f feel ambient to me, in the sense that you will zone out. I think it's well, it's ten minutes twenty three. You will zone out for a large, a large period of that. Yeah, you'll miss it. Yeah, and you won't be able to, but you'll still be uh, involved with the music on some level, I suppose. Mm. It'll still be affecting your yeah, your outlook. Track number four, please. Magnetic tape unit. That's the best title, I think. Really nice, repeating theme, slow, scary fade. Um, so good, really good. Yeah. That I mean, in a way, well, well originally that was the end of the album, and he, and he actually wrote the last track after that, so you can tell how that was the end of the piece, but it, it does work having an extra track on there as well. Yeah. There are some vocals on track four. Mmm. Magnetic tape unit. I assume this, this is how he got the job for Theory of Everything. Yeah. It's a, it's a poem, I think. The vocals. It was actually written that poem, which is, which is, again quite nice. It's, it's a mixture. It's the mixture of um, science, computers, which everyone loves, except uh, for Dio. Except for Dio. Uh, classical music, and modern, and sort of like a strange optimistic modernity. Yeah. Sort of all, all coming together in, in one track. Yeah, but the, I think the ending being scary would have been a different ending to the album and have a different yeah, a different vibe it's like saying it was scary vibe. at the end it was it doesn't say it's scary at the end yeah he, mu he must have done that deliberately that he thought well, i don't want that to be the end yeah. track five the final track mm. the epic but it's not yeah uh, the sun's gone dim and the sky's turned black fantastic title but it's lighter and it feels like a coda and there's more computer voice on there and it's happy but it's i think it, it 
it, give, it it has that optimism at the end and the innocence of it, and I, I like that. Yeah, it's probably the closest it comes to being bombastic on the album. Quite an uplifting. Yeah. Yeah, finish the album, although the sun's gone dim and everything's turned black. <laughs> it feels nice. It's nice. Yeah. It's a good album. Yeah, so uh, that's, I mean, it's, it's something very different to what we've done before, isn't it? Um, I think I can, I'll can. i give it four eggs. I think it deserves four eggs. I don't think I'll give it five eggs. There's probably other things in that style which I'd like more, so I'm going to give it four eggs. If it was a little bit more consistent, it would definitely be a five egg album, but mm. the execution and the way the ideas bubble out of the music is, is, is really quite a rare thing yeah. for the kind of music we review. So, you know, we've, we've come back and we looked at a lot of um, bands that have lots of um, inspiration for their things, whereas it's like the, the music is almost the inspiration for these ideas. Yeah, it isn't quite what you expect, is it? Yeah. If you read about it and you think that'd be like a real avant-garde stuff going on. Yeah. It isn't that at all. It's washes of, of nostalgia. Yeah. You know. Ultimately, it's a guy writing uh, some music about his dad, really. Yeah. You know, looking back nostalgically about his dad. That makes it a very a very unique piece and a very authentic. Authentic is the word I'd use. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it, Although it, it's... Well, it's the old thing about his, his art about ideas, but th this isn't doesn't. It sounds ridiculous. It's not kind of not contrived, mm -hmm. even though it's 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 a concept album. Yeah. <laughs> it's not contrived in in a sense. In a sense, it's just about the emotion. Okay. I'm going to give it five eggs, actually, Kev. Mm -hmm. I'm going to give it five eggs. Cool. So there we go. There we go. Hope that was interesting. Something different. Join us next week for.